ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. It has now been over sailors 30 hours still in the search for five sailors and still no answers. Right now, crews are still actively searching following the dangerous helicopter crash off our coast yesterday. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Steve Atkinson. And I'm Lindsay Pena. We first brought you this story as breaking news last night at 11. And our ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo joins us live from NAS North Island with what we know so far. Laura. Well, the latest update from the Navy tonight is that those search and rescue efforts are continuing tonight looking for those missing crew members. The search for five missing sailors enters its second night off the coast of San Diego. The training that they've got for the search and rescue is literally cutting edge. It's it's the top of the world. One sailor was rescued. In addition to the five that are missing, five sailors on the USS Abraham Lincoln were hurt in the crash. Two were transported for treatment and are stable. The other three had minor injuries and stayed on board the ship. While it's still unclear what caused the helicopter crash, former Navy pilot Jim Kidrick says finding one sailor is a good sign. But it does indicate at least that we know where the airplane uh, went into the water. Kidrick says it's unclear how long crews will look for the sailors, saying that depends on those leading the search. There are very, very qualified people, you know, on duty, on station right now uh, that are going to make the best decisions knowing what our goal is, and that's to try to save our our young men and young women. The Navy says the helicopter, an MH-60S, was conducting a routine flight operation from the Lincoln and that it was operating on the deck before crashing into the ocean. The helicopter itself is a proven design. It's been uh, flown for thousands and thousands of hours. Ross in Davis in is itself. also a former yeah, Navy pilot. Well. He says the helicopter is one of the safest and most reliable in the U.S. military. Each flight crew member goes through extensive and continuous training. There's survival training as well. So provided the aircraft went down in a smooth enough manner, we're still holding hope of survivors because they know how to get out of the helicopter. They know how to survive once they're in the water. Again, those search and rescue efforts are continuing into the night. As soon as we get any word from the Navy, we will bring you that update on later editions of 10 News. Reporting live wow. in Coronado, Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. And we are all still holding out hope. Laura, thank you. Today, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin gave the final total of all the evacuations coming out of Afghanistan. He says that 6,000 Americans, they were taken out of the country along with more than 124,000 Afghan civilians. We have concluded our historic evacuation operation and ended the last mission of the U.S. war in Afghanistan. America's longest war has come to a close. About 14,000 Afghan evacuees are currently at an American air base in Germany where they will be processed. As for those Afghans who applied for an Afghan special immigrant visa, a State Department official says most of them were likely left behind. Immigrant advocates say some new Afghan refugees are facing more trauma once they reach San Diego. As ABC 10 News reporter Michael Chen discovered, some are now dealing with the threat of eviction. On Friday, volunteers from the Helping El Cajon Refugees Facebook page helped furnish and set up this apartment for a family of seven new arrivals after escaping Kabul. Lead organizer Jill Galante says that family is one of the lucky ones. Amid the local housing shortage, her group has helped six other new arrivals since the Taliban takeover who were not supplied temporary housing by a resettlement agency. These are predicaments that, that I feel like we should be avoiding at all costs. Two of the families are staying at motels, draining the little money they have. The other four families have moved in with friends in small apartments. One Afghan translator's family of six has been sleeping on the floor in a national city apartment. They don't have anything but pillows and blankets to lay on because there's no room in the apartments for them to even have air mattresses. Galante says along with that hardship, the friends housing the refugees have been warned about too many residents. There are several uh, landlords that are approaching and have approached these families, letting them know that they are going to be evicted. For the refugee families, the emotions can be overwhelming. Simply exchange one trauma for another. Galante is now calling for rental criteria like income and credit requirements to be relaxed. Plea here is for property managers to reach out 
for property managers to be able to give these refugee families a chance. And if we can't even get these families housed, I certainly don't know what the fate um, of these thousands of families that are going to be coming to San Diego. We want them to feel welcome here. But unfortunately, that simply isn't the case. Michael Chen, ABC 10 News. One of the resettlement agencies has found some housing for the National City family, but it won't be available for a month. If you'd like to host a family, we have a link to helping El Cajon refugees in this story on 10news.com. A Lawson Valley man has created a tribute to the Marines and sailors who died in the bombing in Afghanistan. Ayad Aldajar placed 13 flags alongside the Lawson Valley Road near Skyline Truck Trail. Another member of the community came along and added a Marine Corps flag and crosses to the tribute after it was set up. I know a lot of people who have served in the military and it's just, it's just my neighbors have, family friends have. Um, so it's kind of really important to just kind of bring awareness to such things like this, especially when people died. He's hoping those flags can stay up at least until Monday for the Labor Day weekend. A student at a North Carolina high school is dead after a shooting on campus. Local police have arrested that alleged shooter. The campus was locked down and students moved to a nearby YMCA as they searched for the suspect. That student has been identified as William Miller Jr. The sheriff says he spoke to his mother at the hospital confirming the tragedy. Medical responders begin life-saving measures and the injured student was transported to Wake Forest University Baptist Medical Center where he succumbed to his injuries. Local sheriffs say all other students were safely reunited with their parents after the lockdown. President Biden will head to Louisiana Friday to tour areas that were ravaged by Hurricane Ida. Right now, the storm is causing problems as it heads northeast. Look at this. This is flash flooding. It's taking over New York City and Newark. As you can see from these images here, both cities have declared states of emergency. There have also been tornadoes spotted along the East Coast tonight. And back in Louisiana, seven people, they are now confirmed dead. However, the recovery is beginning. The electricity has now been restored for one portion of New Orleans. Our people have taken a pretty good lick here from Hurricane Ida. Uh, but our people are very resilient and strong as well. Officials say it could be weeks before power is back on for everybody. The devastation of Hurricane Ida displaced thousands of people, including man's best friend. But one local animal shelter is working to find these pets a new forever home. ABC 10 News reporter Ryan Hill shows how these animals made it to safety here at home in a story that is positively San Diego. Meet Pebbles. She's a one-year-old terrier mix adopted by Jacob Davis, who you could call her Bam Bam. Oh my God, I, I locked eyes with her and she has like these like dark gray eyes that I've never seen in any other puppy before. And I locked eyes and she, she immediately started shaking and her tail was going all over the place and it was, it was love at first sight. And... Pebbles came to San Diego and Jacob on not your average charter flight with not your average passenger. It was a pretty amazing thing. In all, more than 70 fluffy and bright eyed orphaned pups and cats touched down in El Cajon and then were taken to the Helen Woodward Animal Center in Rancho Santa Fe. They were rescued by the center in a nonprofit, Greater Good Charities. And they let us know that they had a number of shelters um, out in Louisiana that were really dealing with some major challenges that you can imagine. The challenges packed shelters in what was about to reach the shores of Louisiana. They were in the path of the hurricane. That hurricane was category four Hurricane Ida. Before the storm swept through Louisiana, the Rancho Santa Fe shelter worked with Greater Good to fly the 72 animals out of harm's way last Friday. That really touches my heart because we see the good that animals do for all of us. Getting them to safety the next morning. It's actually the, the fastest. It's a record for our center. So far, 11 of those animals are now at their forever homes instead of being right in the middle of Hurricane Ida's path. And more are expected to be ready for adoption in the coming weeks. Animals like Pebbles may be looking forward to a new place to lay their heads. She's oh, she's so happy every time I come home and I see her, she's, she loses her mind. Those who are helping them get there aren't sleeping on what could have happened to these 72 animals. Every time I think those thoughts, I look at her and I see her shaking her head around with her toy or wagging her tail. And it kind of like it puts a little, ha little smile on my face knowing that she's definitely in a much better place. Ryan Hill, ABC 10 News. 
New tonight, the U.S. Supreme Court is refusing to block Texas's new abortion law. The legislation bans abortions as early as six weeks into pregnancy. This law has made national headlines for being the most restrictive abortion ban in the entire country, as the time frame is usually before many women actually realize they're even pregnant. The new law went into effect today. Less than two weeks to go before the California recall election, and we're getting a new snapshot on the ballots being returned. According to Political Data Inc., 4.6 million ballots have been received so far. Of them, 2.5 million came from Democrats, 1.1 million came from Republicans, and 1 million from independents and third-party voters. If more than 50% of voters decide to recall Gavin Newsom, the replacement candidate with the highest number of votes will become the governor.